start. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Francisca Bonat. I'm today's host. And with me is Yuki. She is giving a introduction to uh, NF Core Nanosec. And uh, welcome. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Um, I'm UD and um, and I have been maintaining NanoSeq for the past two years since I picked it up from Hershiel Patel, um, Laura Warden, and um, Chelsea Sawyer, and also Chinying. And um, then, um, so I've seen it like through it's like DSL one days converted it to the initial DSL two um, first uh, syntax, and like updated it to the to the newest DSL2 syntax with the help with um with a lot of help from Chris Hackard. And so Chris is from Secures Lab and um and he was previously in the University of Tübingen. And um yeah so if you have any questions like on NanoSeq you can always reach out to us and um yeah so without further ado I'll just tell you a little bit about NanoSeq. So NF-Core NanoSeq is a bioinformatics analysis pipeline for nanopore DNA and RNA sequencing data that can be used to perform base calling, demultiplexing, QC alignment, and also downstream analysis. So, um, so in this in this like bite-sized talk, like I'll briefly introduce you to like what is nanopore sequencing and why we need a specific pipeline for nanopore sequencing data, and um, and so. Um, and so because like through the um, Slack channel um, conversations, I pretty much have found like um, people having um, trouble like understanding like how to run NanoSeq itself. So I'll just like go on to the basics of like how to run like um, different parts of the NanoSeq and also like talk to you about um, some latest, um, latest um, addition to the pipeline itself, which we are very excited to introduce you to. And um, so I don't know how familiar the audience is with um, nanopore sequencing. So um, nanopore sequencing is a sequencing technology that's provided by um, Oxford Nanopore um, Technologies. And, um, and so where, uh, here you see that like um, there's this like string of nucleic acid like going through a pore and this is called the nanopore. And as it grows through a pore, um, current signals are emitted from the nanopore itself. And these current signals can be um, can be can be translated into their um, specific um, nucleotide bases. And um, so so nanopore sequencing, like most people know it, like most people know it as like one of the third generation sequencing technologies, and it outputs long read. And um, so the longest read is around like. Um, 2.3 megabase, and, um, and so nanopore sequencing was used in the um, telomere to telomere consortium, which um, completed um, the human genome finally, and um, and it is also used in identifying RNA isoforms because it can um, it can sequence full length RNAs, and so um, nanopore sequencing is different because like it has these kind of like current signals that's it that is output by the pore and so and so these kind of current signals is not available in other sequencing technologies and so with these um current signals um like one can use like machine learning algorithms to um to extract like um biological information such as um DNA modification, RNA modification, poly A tail length and also RNA secondary structure and um without without like having to do like extra wet lab assays. So um, so here's NanoSeq. So it is relatively convoluted, but um, so here, um, so Chris Hackard um, created this um, figure, which is like so nice. And, um, and so, um, so it is color coded like based on the kind of sample that you have. So we have three different subway lines here. So for the blue line, there's this like DNA DNA sample, and for the green line, you get the direct RNA and also like cDNA, cDNA that's like aligned to the genome. And for the um, orange line, is the direct RNA that's like aligned to the transcriptome. And um, and so in the subsequent slides, I will just make it bite size, and and you can um, and I will just talk about like what kind of like stuff we can do with the we can do with these um, these three lines. 
So, um, so for the first part of the pipeline, um, it involves base calling, um, demultiplexing, and also um, QC, and also alignment. So um, base calling starts from um, a FAST5 file, uh, a FAST5 directory containing multiple, a bunch of like FAST5 files. And, um, and so like for the pipeline input, you have to input it as like, as um, with the input path flag, um, with the FAST5 directory. And um, to correctly base call your sample, you have to um, specify the flow cell. And, um, and so demultiplexing can start from either, either the FAST5 directory or the um, FASTQ, undemultiplex FASTQ, where um, if you have like a FAST5, um, undemultiplex FAST5, you can um, demultiplex it with Guppy and you can output like a demultiplex FAST5 um, files like with um, ONT FAST5 API. And, um, and if you have like um, an undemultiplex um, FASTQ file, you can demultiplex it with QCAT. And, um, and so um, you also need to like specify the barcode kit in order for it to be um, demultiplexed like correctly. And, um, and so after the demultiplexing, um, of the FAST5, like you, like we we implemented um, PICO QC and NanoPlot for um, for checking for quality checking the FAST5 files, and for the um, demultiplex FASTQ, we, we have these um, FASTQC and also NanoPlot for checking quality checking the um, the FASTQ files, and so um, so alignment can. Um, can either take in like um, the FASTQ files from um, upstream processes, or um, or from um, user input where um, the FASTQ file is already demultiplexed. So um, for the blue line, um, which is the DNA, and so and so we so our uh, Chris um, added these um, these um, DNA variant calling tools. Um, for for DNA small variant calling and also for um, for structural variant calling and so um, so you can choose between MIDACA and deep variant for small variant caller and um, you can choose um, sniffles and QCB for for um, structural variant caller and um, and so um, the default is MIDACA for small variant caller and sniffles for um, structural variant caller and if you have more questions, if you have any questions on DNA structural variant calling, you can um, reach out to Chris. He knows a lot more than I do on this. And um, and he is also on the call, so he'll take questions like if if you are if you are interested in these. And um and so for for RNA, so um if you have like cDNA sample or um direct RNA sample, you and if you align it to the genome, you can do um, transcript discovery and also quantification. And, um, and so these processes take an assorted band from these samples. And, um, and so the default is bamboo. So bamboo does both um, transcript discovery and also quantification. And um, we also have another option which uses string tie two for transcript discovery and feature counts for quantification. And after after um, transcript discovery and quantification, um, um, if you have more than one group of samples, you can also do a differential expression analysis on the G level with DexSeq2 and, um, and on the transcript level with DxSeq. So on the green line, we also, and this is also a new functionality where um, where um, we we implemented we um, included um, Java L for detection of um, RNA fusions, and um, and so it takes in a FASTQ file from either from either the sample sheet where um, given that like it is demultiplex and um, we can um, take it like from upstream processes like if you start from a if you start from fast five files or um, or undemultiplex fast two files, and so for for the last part of the new newest edition of the pipeline is the um, RNA modification detection, 
which um, this one is a little um, different in a sense where, where um, per sample, you should have like, uh, you should have a larger directory per sample and within the directory itself, you should have like a fast five directories, a fast five subdirectory and a fast Q subdirectory. And within the fast five subdirectories, you need to include like all the fast five files in it. And um, in the fast Q subdirectory, please only include one base called fast Q file in it. And um, and so, and so it goes through the um, alignment to the transcriptome, um, convert it to BAM, then um, prior to prior to RNA modification detection, um, nano polish is run for segmentation. And um, and and um, if you only have a single sample, you can um, detect M6A with um, M6A net. And if you have multiple groups of samples. Um, if you want to see like the differential modification um, it's across the samples, um, you can run explore. And, um, and so it does the differential modification analysis. So um, just to summarize, so um, here is the nano C pipeline. So, so um, there are a lot of tools um, being included here, but you don't have to install anything other than the next flow and Docker or singular, Singularity or Conda, depending on whether you are using an AWS cloud or you are using um, an HPC. And now like with the latest release of NanoSeq, um, it supports DNA variant calling, transcript discovery and quantification, RNA fusion detection, and also RNA modification detection. And yeah, thanks for listening, and um, I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, am I visible? I, I have to remove the spotlight. <laughs> no. uh, anyway, uh, I have now allowed uh, or I allow now everyone to uh, unmute themselves if they want to ask questions. Otherwise, you can also put questions in the chat. Um, there's actually a comment that we have in the chat. Uh, from Olaitan, uh, sorry if I butchered the name. Uh, he says that T2T uh, completed a human genome and not plus D human genome. Uh, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, and also he uh, thinks that Sniffles 2 exists, which is an enhanced uh, um, caller for structural okay. variants. Uh, have you thought about Sniffles 2? I know this was not your main part, but hey yeah i can probably jump in oh yeah um so yeah I've, I've seen that come out very recently maybe in like the last four months um so sniffles was initially added about 12 months ago it's kind of the first caller um that we were interested in um in my opinion it's also superseded by cute sv which when we did testing it was actually the best caller um, but in saying that, I haven't actually tested Sniffles 2 with a full data set, so I can't be sure if it's better or worse, but um, something we can definitely look into for a quick um, a quick add in the future. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, hi, uh, thanks. Uh, great talk. Uh, I'm just, uh, my interest lies in mostly uh, native RNA transcriptomics. I wondered uh, if... Uh, if there is a way to add uh, poly eight tail measurements, yeah, that's uh, like on our radar. So, so we actually talk about like adding the um, poly eight tail length detection to it because, like, yeah. um, yeah, our like one of our lab members actually added like the poly eight tail functionality from Nano Polish, but I'm looking into tail finder right now. So, yeah. Do you have any specific um, poly A tail length um, prediction tools that you want to add in? Uh, well, Nanopolish tool works really great with the native RNA. Okay. Link tail finder can do a cDNA. However, mm -hmm. it uses CPU and it's kind of slower uh, okay. if you have a big data set. Uh, while Nanopolish is much faster to do it. And I think there is. Uh, a shiny app where you can visualize it. And one more other thing is while we're at the three prime end, is there any tools available to add to this pathways for alternative polyadenylation characterization? 
uh, of any transcripts. Tools that, yeah. Um, do you have any tools that you have like specifically in mind on like um, poly um, um, alternative polyadenylation? Um, for, a long read? for a long read at the moment, uh, um, I am just looking at something called LAPA. It's in GitHub. I think uh, the group is still working on a paper, uh, but it's in GitHub. It's a long read alternative pollination. I think they're called in it LAPA. LAPA? Yeah. Yeah, because but, I am aware that like there are there are short read um polyadenylation tools such as um Quapa, um, yes, Quapa yes. Labrad or um or there are I, there are quite a few tools out there that that do that and um yeah so so I'm not exactly sure like how translatable like those tools are to um are to nanopore. Um, reads and so yeah so it will be great if you yeah. can um, suggest yeah. several long read tools that we can look into too yeah because I think there is a, a long a roundabout way of getting it through flare and then flare, there okay. is a yeah flare and then there is uh, I think uh, tapas uh, has got something but I think tapas is more uh, packed tapas. bio or orientated Tapas as of like because I'm aware of like the T A P P A S yeah okay cool cool yeah, because I'm aware of the fact that like there's another tapas which is like T A P A S like all caps so it is yeah, not that one right is. no it's not that one I think it's this one is I think they've got their own um, okay. kind of Java user interface. Okay. But uh, underneath it, there is a lot of kind of flare and scanty three. It's where it, it does some of the transfer variants of bully detection and finding of APA sites. But it's it's something obviously it'll, it'll complete it'll complete the pathway quite nicely to take it from everything yes. that you have currently to APA and also poly detail. That would be great. Well, thank you very much. Yes, Good for sure. great, thank great, you great for great suggestions. Work. Yeah, I think I can just uh, as a follow up to that, that the group that did the tapas, you know, they did a very robust, um, uh, would I call it software now? Because I saw the demo by the PI of that group. I mean, it does a lot of things. If you're doing anything isoform related, you just need to, they've done so much work. So if you can, since you're doing transcript discovery, you can just figure out a way to uh, maybe you just find some of the features that they have implemented in things like tapas or mm -hmm. there's, there's another one or CAS, you know, where you can okay. integrate into your pipeline since you're already doing transcriptomics and, um, and uh, structural variant stuff, you know, with long grid. So that would really help your pipeline to become more robust. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for these suggestions. Yep. Uh, there's also another question in the chat. Uh, Ido is asking, do you plan to include genome assembly tools to the pipeline? Yeah, um, yeah, uh, we actually talked about this like during the lab meeting um, last week and we hope to include um, Raven um, into like the um, genome assembly because I, I suppose it is also nanopore based. So um, yeah, so we, we're looking to include that. And do you have any specific tools that um, that you have in mind that you you would suggest us to include it into? Uh, Ido, you could also unmute yourself if you wanted to. Otherwise, you can write in this in the chat. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I don't have anything in particular in mind, but, you know, just the, the common sort of uh, pipeline tools, you know, that uh, whether it's using Raccoon or, uh, or Nanopolish or, uh, you know, just, just, just the normal, then, you know, it depends obviously which, which organism we look at, we're looking at. Um, but, you know, I would say just sort of the common pipelines that would either take uh, Nanopore reads by itself or whether they're taking hybrid um, both Illumina and Nanopore to, to do the assemblies, but 
yeah, I was just just looking at you know some of the common pipelines, but just put them inside this uh, this workflow uh, will make it very you know very easy to use. Unless there's something there's already a pipeline that exists that that is designated for uh, genome assembly. Okay, great, awesome. Yeah, thanks for these suggestions. Okay, uh, there is another question in the chat. Uh, what is the best practice process for nanopore sequencing metagenomics? That's a complicated question, actually. What's the answer? Yeah, that's a good question. I I don't some, do metagenomics. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think I can jump in. So somebody did a benchmark of metagenomics um, tools and really came up with the conclusion that there is no best. So I think that's the simple answer to that question, because some of the well-established ones didn't even perform well when he did his benchmark and he presented these at a conference, um, I think about a month ago that I was uh, I was part of, it's a long read conference, and conference where they were just doing uh, different kinds of um, presenting tools and stuff like that. And you know, when, it was, when it came to the metagenomics part, when he did his presentation, there was no, for his conclusion, there was no best metagenomics tools for a long read. Yeah, interesting. I. I, I, I have a question um, for the NF core, core team. Um, is there a pipeline for metagenomics? I, I suppose MAC is for metagenomics, right? Um, is there someone from the core team here? That or Chris knows? Um, I was just checking that. I think there is something that's pretty close. Um, I think in terms of nanoseq, uh, doing metagenomics might be slightly outside the scope. Um, mm -hmm. I think one thing we've found developing this pipeline is that it's already a, it's, it's a bit of a beast already. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you could easily split this pipeline into three different pipelines: one for DNA, one for you know sort of standard RNA seq, and one for kind of these um, isoform detection. Um, you know, yes, we could look at trying to include it, but I think it, personally, I think it might be a step too far. Um, and I am suspicious that there is another pipeline that does some form of metagenomics, but I can't remember the name of it. Um, so please don't quote me on that. Um, hey guys, uh, just uh, one more comment or uh, kind of a question about including short reads. I think uh, that's what the TAPAS kind of pathway kind of includes, includes a lot of uh, short reads for transcript variants. So it could be, um, beneficial for both the assembly, but also for more complete transcript kind of uh, variants. If 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 there is an option to include okay. a lib nash or reads, and obviously it increases some depth if you want to do the DSEC kind of differential expression analysis, because I don't know uh, if the depth is high enough in some of the sequencing. Uh, so. That's another comment. One more comment is about uh, de novo uh, modified base detection uh, with Tombo. Can that be added? I know Tombo is not really well. Yeah, so um, we are exploring on. that right now. Okay. No, thank you very much. Great work. And again, uh, quite, quite excited about this pipeline. So there's a comment in the chat that talks about, I mean, the the scale or the scope of this work you are currently doing. I mean, he was just saying that, do you think that this workflow is becoming too big? And I was actually going to say the same thing. So what I was going to say is that you can actually focus for now, maybe you don't have to take my suggestion though, on maybe the RNA-based uh, analysis and just, you know, uh, make that as um, robust as you can or focus on the DNA-based analysis you know, and then when you think that one is uh, decent enough in terms of scale, you can then move on to the other one. You know, I think somebody is just making a similar uh, comment. Yeah, I, I I think that's a good suggestion. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I think like, I think Chris and I are, are a good team that like he, he does the DNA part of it and um, and um, people from the lab I work at, um, we do the RNA part of it. And um, yeah, so so yeah, um, 
Yeah, we, I think like we also have some concerns about like when is the pipeline like out of scope? And so, and so definitely like that's, that's on our radar to think about. Yeah, Chris, do you have anything to add? Yeah, look, I completely agree. Um, I think initially kind of, you know, last year when we sort of started adding all of these new features and, um, you know, it, it made sense because the front end of the pipeline was was more or less the same and it made sense to recycle it. But now with a lot of the pipelines kind of building these really awesome sub workflows, which um, can be shared and integrated multiple pipelines, um, you know, it would be nice to kind of lean into that side of the community and kind of and share what we're doing and, and sort of be shared with as well. Um, one of the things about NanoSeq is that the, the sample sheet is a little bit atypical and that you can specify genomes for um, different samples or a different genome for different samples and um, different alignments and things like this. Um, so NanoSeq is already kind of coloring a little bit outside the lines of um, your typical NF core pipeline. Um, and it is something we've spoken about and I think we'll speak about it again very soon about kind of trying to bring it back to um, that kind of NF core way of doing things. And as a part of that, I could see that we, we may consider splitting the pipelines um, but that's something we'll have to we'll talk about soon, I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, if there are no more questions at this moment, I thank you again, Yuki. Uh, Yuki? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I also would like to take the uh, chance to thank the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative for funding these uh, talks. And if there are any more questions to anyone here, um, you can always come to the Slack channel for bite-sized talks or specifically for NanoSec and ask your questions there and you might get an even more detailed answer. So um, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.